you've ever been tased, whether that be due to legal activities or illegal activities, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. Comment section is out of control. Comment with how you got tased. I would love to hear about it. I've been tased a few times in my life. Guys, the biggest supporter of the channel right now is Big Daddy Unlimited. Big Daddy Unlimited is like the Costco of the gum world. 99 cents for the first month. After that, price goes up. Is it worth it? Are you worth it? I think you are. Guys, a couple other sponsors of this channel. We have the Dude Bag. The Dude Bag is a subscription service. Lots of really cool stuff. Lots of um, different boxes for different types of likes, whether that be the outdoors, movies. Uh, discount code ONWARD will give you a sick, sick knife. So definitely go and check them out. We, of course, have the USCCA. They are concealed carry insurance. Um, if you can't get it in your state, they also have good resources for firearms and that type of stuff. Beyond that, we finally have goat guns. Goat guns are little gun models that you can use and build with your kids. It'll be lots of fun. Definitely go check them out. Ladies, gentlemen, am I often forgotten, but not by me. 81 millimeter mortars. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about tasers. And to help me talk about tasers, we have one of my favorite people, Mochi, you want to come over here and talk a little bit about the man? Sure. Thanks. So. Welcome to the channel. I think this is one of the first times we've had you on. This is the first time, I believe. Awesome. I was in the background of the, the grenade launcher video. Oh, but. good time. So, <laughs> yeah, a little spoiler, you go back there and try to find him back mm -hmm. there. But, uh, you know, you have some experience with tasers, so I wanted to get you on to talk a little bit um, about your experience and, you know, some of those uh, kind of interesting aspects of carrying a taser to my audience. So sure. what's your experience with it? So my experience is relegated to my uh, federal employment at United States Southern Command a couple years ago. And of course we carry tasers in that employment. Mm -hmm. So basically taser is a uh, electrical shock weapon, but the important distinction to make is that it's a less lethal, not a non-lethal weapon because due to either secondary conditions that okay. your target may have or external circumstances, it could lead to ser serious injury or death when it is employed. Yeah, you, and you do hear about that occasionally. So this isn't always a less le lethal option. Mm -hmm. Like there is always the chance it's gonna like, you know, fuck up the heart and mm -hmm. you're gonna not wake up or something like that, exactly. right? Now, um, the particular uh, taser that you carried was the X26, I believe? Correct. Made by Taser. So mm -hmm. today we're talking about the Pulse from Taser made by the same company. Um, Fairly similar in a lot of ways, a mm -hmm. little bit less umph than the X26, but mm -hmm. I think that there's a lot of parallels that you can talk about. Sure. So man, go ahead and take it off. You want to talk about this a little bit? So what I'm familiar with, the yeah. X26, is basically just like this, shaped just like a pistol, has a safety manipulator just like this, mm -hmm. also has a visible red laser. When you manipulate the safety, that red laser will show up on your target, and that's how you basically aim the weapon because it doesn't have any real sights to speak of. Yeah, exactly, and it's the same thing with these. Uh, so you want to come right in here, Micah. Um, so this has a light and a laser. So for the types of environments that you'd probably be using this probably mostly at night, mm -hmm. if we're being honest, um, that is enough illumination to illuminate your target. And then the laser is roughly uh, where that's going to impact. I found that it's pretty much on par with what you'd expect. So it's mm -hmm. very similar to what you're already familiar with. So one of the differences between this civilian model and the X-26 that either military or law enforcement uh, agencies have is that the distance that you can effectively yep. use it. The civilian version is effective maybe out to about 15 feet, whereas the military law enforcement versions, you can get about 35 feet if you're lucky. Mm -hmm. But of course, you have to adjust for your trajectory because you're shooting these of course. Darts. Yeah, they're, darts. they only have so much. Yes. Oomph, as you yeah, said. Yeah, oomph. <laughs> and then, you know, so the biggest thing for me mm -hmm. is that, you know, a lot of people are choosing to carry these tasers. If you want to come near and take a closer look at it, um, because they want a less than lethal option. Yeah. But there are a couple issues with carrying a taser. And uh, one of those for me is that you have pretty much one shot, mm -hmm. right? If you don't make that shot, um, or if you don't get a good contact, mm -hmm. you're kind of you're kind of shit out of luck. So, if you would talk a little bit to that about, uh, you know, if you don't get that good shot, um, you know, what can happen, or thick clothing, that type of stuff. Sure. So, with X26, you have the cartridge that's loaded into the front of your weapon. You have an ability to load another cartridge on the bottom of your pistol grip, essentially, as an extra. But like you said, mm -hmm. with not getting a correct contact, basically how the weapon works is it shoots out two darts about 180 feet. And once it has a completed circuit, it generates about 50,000 volts through that circuit. And for optimal uh, generation of that circuit, you want a dart in your lower torso or one of your extremities and up in the upper torso. Mm -hmm. But because those darts are basically just darts fired out by a compressed gas, if you're wearing a heavy jacket, if you're moving, if you have a uh, 
heightened response, say you're very angry or under uh, various pharmaceuticals that people like to use out <laughs> here in society mm -hmm. that may not be effective. So carrying this civilian taser, if you don't get a good contact with that first cartridge and you don't have the ability to load another cartridge in, you're kind of screwed. Ab absolutely. And that's kind of my big issue with it. So, um, you know, if you're going to end up carrying one of these, and I, I know quite a few people who do because they don't want a lethal option, um, you just need to consider that Yes, you can unload them, and it's not too bad. Can I have my uh, taser kangaroo come over here? Um, so to reload the cartridge, all you're gonna do is you squeeze the sides right here, and you can pop that cartridge out. And then once you get a new cartridge, uh, in this case, they come in these little protective cases right there. Um, then, you know, obviously you pop them out of the plastic. You can load that new cartridge in, in any orientation. You're supposed to squeeze on the sides, not do what I just did. But in any case, we have it loaded. Now here's the thing. If you, you know, miss a shot, if you get one probe in the body, not two, and you're not able to make it work, um, you can still pull the spent cartridge out and you can go to contact. So it's still an effective contact weapon, but of course you're getting very close at that point. Mm -hmm. And what's good about the taser compared to the professional model is that with this one, if you hit somebody with it and you make good contact, this is meant to be a fire and then pretty much forget weapon. So you hit them, it begins to tase them, and it will continue tasing them and changing frequencies for about 30 seconds. So it's the uh, that 30 second guarantee where it's gonna keep somebody mm -hmm. just on the ground for those 30 seconds. So it is, that is I think a good kind of implementation based on what it's used for. Mm -hmm. And then if you need more juice than that, you can hit the trigger again and you're gonna get another 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, so that's nice, it's just realizing that if you don't get that good contact that it's not gonna happen. Now, sure. um, are there any other kind of weird things about the taser, like contact? Like, how effective is the contact? So, again, how the uh, the taser works mm -hmm. is it's a neuromuscular inca incapacitation. Mm -hmm. So, basically, that electrical current that's coursing through your body, yeah. it overrides the message that your brain is sending to your muscles, locks okay. your muscles up, and you don't move. When that's not happening, you still have the drive stun capability, as you said. Okay. But that doesn't override any of your muscles. It's or just pain. It's just pain compliance. Yeah. So, that but like you said. The uh, downside of that is you have to have contact your weapon onto the subject or target, whatever you want to call it, which uh, requires you to be close. Okay, I get that. Now, so I have a couple issues with the pulse. Mm -hmm. So my biggest issue, if you want to come in here and take a closer look, is the safety. The safety is really counterintuitive in my opinion. When you're gripping the gun, um, even on like a, a regular type of firearm, I, I would like something that I can sweep down and get it easily into place. With this, you have to push it up and because of that, it's a little bit odd to get it into play. So if you're under a lot of stress, that type of thing, I think it's gonna be a little bit harder to get it ready to go. I don't like that so much. The trigger, I'm not gonna go to the trigger because it's just gonna fire this thing. The trigger's really nice. It's a little bit less than a pound, so it is quite incredible. Um, I mean, overall, it's a very lightweight package. Um, uh, this particular model's been carried by a lot of people. I've lent this out so they can try it out. So I've had this for about a year and a half and the battery hasn't needed to be changed yet. Um, if you come on the back right here, and when you turn it on, it's gonna light up right there. Green means you're good, yellow means you need to change the battery. Change the battery through the bottom right there. And um, we've shocked, we shocked, we tased a couple people with this and we've had no problem. So the batteries are quite good. I found that the reliability and durability mm -hmm. of these are quite good. I wouldn't expect anything else from Taser. Mm -hmm. um, they are the original makers of it. Um, it's a pretty cool weapon, but I mean, the biggest question in my mind is can does does the size of the person matter uh not necessarily okay it can uh if they're under like i said the influence of pharmaceuticals or whatnot yeah. but as long as you get a good contact between upper torso and an extremity we should be good and you're able to com complete that circuit then you should be good well i find that there's nothing like practical application do you agree i agree so we have three individuals that we're going to be tasing right here if i want to go ahead and have them come on down right now so Right over here, we have, of course, my brother-in-law, Tyler. He's been on the channel before. Tyler, you have been tear gassed. You have been OC sprayed. Now you're gonna get tased. What's next? Mm, probably shot. All right, right <laughs> here we have a redhead, resident redhead, no soul. And then, of course, we have our large Samoan man. So I feel like we have a good spread of people. I'm not saying that you're average, but you're kind of the average guy here. Nothing wrong with that. We're not calling you mediocre at all, just to be clear. I appreciate that. No problem. <laughs> so um, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna tase these three guys, and we're gonna see how it works because there's nothing like practical application. Agreed? 
Agreed. Good times. Yeah. <laughs> Ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, go ahead and take off your jackets. So right here, we're gonna get these guys set up. We're gonna have their jackets off for this because um, clothes can impede the ability of these probes to do a good job. If the um, probe doesn't get enough contact into it, it can jump under ideal conditions through two inches of clothing. But for the purpose of this, we're doing light clothing. Just you realize that heavy clothing can definitely present a problem with a taser, which is another thing to think about if you're gonna be carrying a taser. So. Uh, Tyler, I believe that you're up first. First. Okay. Yeah. Tyler, if you want to go ahead and stand over there. Gentlemen, you want to go ahead and hold them up? Yep. yep. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to taste Tyler now. Now, the, the offer is with full contact. If Tyler is able to support his weight and power through the taser, he will get $200. And that's for any of you, by the way. So if any of them is able to do it, we're good. When you fire the taser, one prong goes straight and one prong is going to go down. That's to get the spread, to get that neuromuscular incapacitation. Is that the correct word? Correct. So without further ado, let's go and let's get this going. All right, gentlemen, you wanna go ahead and hold them up? Tyler, we're gonna do a countdown from three. You ready? Yep. Three, two, one. How you feeling, dude? Oh, come on, five seconds. Back. There's Woo. no fucking way. <laughs> oh. Feeling good? Yeah, I feel like my hair should be standing up. <laughs> oh. oh. All right, second one, man. It's only five seconds, man. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, so if you want to come oh. over here, Ty, how you feeling, man? I feel good. I mean, it was, it, it was a little bit more than uh, <laughs> than the I've I've been I've been tased before. Yeah, like that. And I've been tased like where it's just the contact, yeah. but I think I think the prongs are definitely a, a lot stronger, you know? Yeah. Definitely a lot stronger than if you're just gonna get contact tased. <laughs> the prongs, so. so they sucked. Yeah. So it did take down a Marine. Did I didn't go down, did I? You were yeah. definitely not on your own oh, way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're they right, held you right. up. You're right, yeah, you did help me up. I couldn't feel it though. I couldn't feel it there holding me. You were, you were, you yeah. were arched out, dude. Was I? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I can't wait that to was... show. I can't wait to show that slow mo. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> well, Ty, um, because you have uh, been shot, you now get to shoot yes. uh, your next person. Who would you like to shoot? Right. So with these right here, all we're gonna do is squeeze them, and we can pop those out. That's a new cartridge. It's a lot worse. If you, if you Go know, ahead and load really that really up, bad, then. and we have our next cartridge. And if you check right there, <laughs> we've done one cycle, and no battery loss. We're looking good. Okay, count down. Three, two, one. Disclaimer, we should tell people how to shut the taser off. <laughs> um, that was five. I was counting five. Oops. Oh. Was it more than five? Yeah, it was. Oh, no, dude, I'm sorry. Oh I'm so sorry, dude. There, bud. I'm so know. sorry. I tried not to cuss, but uh, that just came out Mike, naturally. Was that? I, ooh, that was a lot. Like, I have a long five, I apologize. Ty is just standing there just... <laughs> okay, dude, you ready? Oh, yeah. so All right, you want to come dude. in here? So, only the only the law enforcement and military ones have that automatic Bro, automatic five. <laughs> dude, Ty was just. <laughs> I was counting to five, dude. I have a, I Ty's have like, a long five. One one thousand. <laughs> two one thousand. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Here you go. Get this thing away from me, dude. Okay. So don't even don't even give me a count. Kit, if you want to come in here. Yeah. All right, Kit, you have now been tased. Yeah. Uh, there's only one person left to tase. That is a redhead. I don't know if it's gonna be effective. I, I hear they don't have a soul, so. We're gonna try. Ready? What if you explode? Oh, my God. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh. All the souls that he stole. Just oh, man. Oh. Just, woo, there's a soul in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, man. That's horrible. So I'll let you have the end of your trinket. No. Yeah. <laughs> and negative. God. Okay, Mikey, you'll come in. That is awful. All right, dude, you ready to get these out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big shout out to T Rex Arms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should have had armor. What do you want to say? <sighs> Kids, try not to get tased. <laughs> oh. I like that. <laughs> that. That doubles as my piece of dad advice. This is good advice. <laughs> okay, now that we're done tasering everybody, um, wanted to give these guys a second to talk about how it was, um, how they think they'd feel after 30 seconds of it, and whether they'd be able to pursue an attacker. So, guys, all on you. Yeah, I'm definitely going to say 30 seconds. Uh, that's cardiac arrest territory because uh, the 10 seconds or so that Tyler gave me was enough, <laughs> enough for a lifetime. Yeah. I know Kit gave me a slightly abridged version and that was plenty terrible to not want to. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. If you tase me, out, you can do whatever you want to me after that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I can't imagine you trying to sprint at somebody. Like, you know, if a police officer tase you, like if you were trying to sprint at that police officer, I can't imagine you being able to do that or anybody who's uh, defending themselves from you. Yeah. You know, because it's, it just shuts everything down. I mean, they, like uh, Mochi was saying, they'd have to be on some sort of like pharmaceutical meth crack or I don't know, you know, to power through that where they couldn't feel it. That's really the only way I think that could happen, so. I mean, because you get that, you get that mo uh, Mochi, if you want to come in and speak for that for a second. I mean, it, it does lock up the muscles, so regardless of drugs, shouldn't it be able to lock up someone? It should. Mm -hmm. um, but again, that also comes down to getting that good contact between the two prongs. Okay. Because in a fluid environment, when you're employing this, uh, if you're not getting perfect contact, like we got in these gentlemen, they're standing still, being yeah. held up, we're close contact with that those prongs, then all those factors will come into play. Awesome. Okay. Well, well good, good point. Well, what I wanted to do at this point, guys, was... Um, Recreate a couple scenes. Uh, we'll see if we can shoot a guy in the face, what the prongs are gonna do. See how far we can shoot these from, because we have a couple of cartridges left, and uh, give you guys a ch you know, chance to shoot some more, and uh, try it out and everything. So, uh, let's get into it. So, uh, we'll start with you. Um, what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead, th this should be about a 15 uh, foot approximate effective range. So we'll step back about, we're at about the 12 foot mark here, and we'll see, we'll kind of square up the target. And we'll see if we're able to hit it, um, you know, where these prongs are contacting. I'm guessing that the bottom prong's probably gonna go off the target, but just to see kind of where it hits if we aim like upper chest or something. So on you, I mean, hopefully your trigger finger's good, dude. All right, go ahead and shut it off. All right, let's go ahead and see where it went. Did it make it? I didn't think we're it, made, it went about right here and then it rebounds. Okay, so yeah, we found the, the found the limit of the effective range right yeah. there. All right, we'll try another one. Kev, do you want to come shoot this guy in the face? <laughs> I'll do my best. Nice. Hit the safety on. There you go. Okay, <laughs> I see how that happened now. <laughs> God, that's dirty. <laughs> oh, this is a hangover part. <laughs> hangover part one and a half. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Nice. Shit, that's actually pretty good. I was actually, yeah, I was actually using these little. I didn't even look for the laser, but. Oh really? Oh, use use the uh, sights on that one. Yeah. Oh nice. It just instinctively was like. Brought it out and it worked for you. Yeah. Not bad. All right. Let's see. So what was our spread about there to there? So we had like a. Feet. Yeah, two feet about. Not bad. We'll do another one. Nice. <laughs> okay. So, so some interesting points here, right? To see where our spread is at. So you want to step, yeah, right there. So, yeah, we have a pretty good about two feet as far as our spread. So that's that's pretty significant. So it's something to think about depending on your distance. The further you are the more of that prong spread you're gonna have right there. So, I mean, that's what it really comes down to. If you choose to carry a taser, I mean, just realize that, you know, there's some there's some things that are gonna be a problem. Um, I do think that a firearm is a more reliable self-defense weapon in every way. Um, I think, you know, uh, it's really not, not that much more of a big deal to carry one. You do have to get some more licensing, and I understand that's kind of more of a pain. But in most places that allow you to carry a taser, there are some exceptions, uh, you can also carry a gun. So again, uh, look at what you need to, need to do, but if you're going to carry a taser, you should probably be training with it 
as much as you train with a handgun. So for like that taser right there, um, about about mid 200s, maybe low 300s or so, each cartridge is about 35 to $70, depending on where you're buying it, the discount program. So, you know, to be able to practice with this, and in my opinion, be effective with it, I think you're, you're looking to spend a lot of money. So again, yes, good, if you can get your hit, but you need to practice just like anything else. So get training out there, guys. Tons of people to get training from. Um, you know, we have Haley Strategic, not my dad, uh, Core Vision, um, Drew Estel from Bear Solutions, Pat McNamara, tons of good guys out there. Get training, that is what matters. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, stay looking cool out there. I've got nothing else for you. All right, final thing from you guys. Um, we have three different people who are tased today, so let's go ahead and bring them on right here. So guys, I always let people do a little bit of dad advice, so I'm gonna let all three of you impart a little bit of wisdom to my fans. We'll start with you, Kit. We're gonna put you right on the spot, man. If you got anything to say to them, go yeah. hit them. A little bit of dad advice here. Uh, don't get tased, plain and simple. <laughs> That's a good one. Nice. Uh, I'm gonna say, you know, don't worry about people that are judging you. Just Go out and do your own thing, you know, be your own person, be your own man, be your own woman, and uh, just have fun, so. Uh, for me, you guys kind of stole my advice, so find what you want to do and just go do it. Um, don't listen to anyone else and just do your thing, do you. Perfect, love it. Guys, thanks for coming on. Um, Final kind of note here, you guys know if you've made it this far, we're gonna talk about Survival Dispatch. Survival Dispatch is a uh, survival website, bunch of SEER information as a former SEER guy, can't recommend it enough. Definitely go in there, check it out. Final shout out to my Patreon people. Thank you for making this channel amazing. Love you guys. I've got nothing else for you.